Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to another live edition of the Highbury Squad. Football is back, and my goodness, was it back with a bang at Vicarage Road today. Here we go with the post-game show, play ratings, and a little open magic mic later on. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. Inject this picture, soak it up. You know I don't need any excuses to put it up on screen. Welcome back to the show, my podcast brother from another mother, Mr. Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell. Sophie! Was that a bit of Frank you, Sinatra? Did, did you wear Frankie? My <laughs> kind of title. Listen, <laughs> our kind of game, three points. Squaddies at ease. Let's be positive because we got those points. Boom! Shakala. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to all the usual suspects in the house. Hope you guys are very well and can hear us loud and clear. What a game that was. Kev, quality goals, maybe other than the last one, which gave us that squeaky bum yeah. feeling. Crikey. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a uh, Keystone Cops at the end. But <laughs> great, great goals. It, it was a... Did you find that game went pretty quickly? So very quickly to, to the point where I literally um, was talking to Magic Mike on the phone and I'm like, listen, us girls need to get a little camera ready. Can't just roll out of bed like you, mister, with a yeah. shaved head and make it work. But I got my tea cozy on and I managed to put a sweatshirt on just in time, Super Kev. It went so, so fast. So fast. Yeah, good game. And don't forget it's a derby as well. It's a derby game, so... You know, Arsenal versus Watford, I think it's one hedge that splits us, doesn't it? At the training grounds and all that, Sophie. So, listen, it's, it's been a good game over the years and um, it was really good to see us as an attacking force today. I thought we attacked really well. It was so much fun to watch. Um, yeah, there were moments towards the end where we were like, oh gosh, here we go again. But the point is, is that it might be a here we go again, but we're not that here we go again team anymore we're almost you know but we're not quite there were moments um where it felt like oh are we gonna you know are we gonna um are we gonna mess screw this up and mess it up um yeah so um let me know about the sound i'm using a different mic today by the way so um let me know i know you critics out there with the sound uh, i've taken my other mic in for a fix it needs needs a little bit of a reboot just like this arsenal team has been through and we like it so far kev should we just get stuck right into it and by the way yeah. there's going to be a link that comes up in the comment section um kev and i are going to duck out of the show uh at about the half hour mark and magic mike is going to step in and you guys can have your voice heard on the open mic here tonight on the Highbury Squad. We've had so many people write into us who say, why don't you bring folks into the show, which we used to do a lot, by the way, when we first started out. But sometimes things get a little bit crazy. So um, Magic Mike will be here to do that with you in just a little bit. Uh, OK, Kev. Let's start with Ramsdale. So uh, because, look. He's, he's, he's got a lot of love off the Arsenal fans, etc. But I thought he looked a little bit shaky at times today. I've got to say that. Um, what's your thoughts on it, Sol? Um, well, I was just reading Foopy's comment and I haven't even said anything about Xhaka yet. <laughs> <laughs> Give me well, he's, 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 uh, he's probably expecting something, but you're not going to go there because I thought he'd he done all right. I mean, uh, as a team, as a team, we've done fine. It was just certain moments where we should and could have done better, really, isn't it? You know. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so Rambo did not have his best game. It was actually one of his worst games I've seen since he's come to the club. A little indecision, a little cockiness, Kev. A little yeah. bit too much cockiness. I like the confidence, but a bit too cocky. Gets a six for me. 
could have cost us today, but luckily Cedric, even though he didn't make that tackle, you know when he came down and made the save and there was a Watford player coming in to tap it in, Cedric put the Watford player off just by his presence. So, so yeah, he gets a six for me. Yeah, I, listen, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with you on that. So, a six, I think some of his kicking where he was under no pressure whatsoever was a bit ropey and put us into a little bit of problems at times. Um, their goal, the first goal, he had no chance. The second goal, I thought he could have done a bit better. Um, but hey, listen, we won the game, we got through, and uh, all that, <laughs> the time wasting stuff at the end was quite funny. Uh, really interesting. Um, all right, Kev, who's next? Cedric. So, so I'm giving him six, so for just like you are. Um, let's look at Cedric, who I thought done okay today. Sophie, if I'm honest with you, I thought that I thought a lot of our problems were down the were down the left, especially in the first half. Um, I thought he was neat and tidy. Sophie gave one away late in the second half. Probably was getting a little bit tired, but I thought Cedric done okay. Sophie, you know, was really linked up well with Saka on that right hand side. It was a real plus point for us. I'm gonna I'm gonna give Cedric a seven today. So. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't mind. I th there were a couple of people that were giving him a hard time um, on the old Twitter sphere. Uh, but, you know, for me, uh, I just thought he did his job again. He, it's that old adage, I say it a lot, and it comes from that Bill Belichick-esque, you know, um, school of thought, just do your job. And I just think he does his job. And he, and he, I think there were times where, like I said, he helped Rambo as well. So he gets a solid 6.5 for me today. Yeah, that's fair. So, 6.5. I'll give him a 7. Um, next is Kieran Tierney, So, What's your thoughts on Tierney? Um, Kieran Tierney. You know, we talked got about this... the armband this... as well. We got the armband second Yes, half, which yeah, was, which was, which which was, was nice. Um, you know, we talked about this with Josh on Tactical Squad and then you and I have discussed this and you think it's a little bit of a myth, I think, that he and Martinelli can't work well together. Although it was, I think, the weak part of the pitch today. It improved as the game went on, Kev. But First half, it was our weak spot, yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, so, so for me, I give KT a 6.5. Um, yeah, not, not his best, but at the same time, again, still solid, didn't make mis too many mistakes and just did his job. There was nothing spectacular about the way he played. Yeah. I, I just think down that left-hand side, because our right was doing so much better than the left, it just seemed that uh, as though, you know, they couldn't get it together. The first goal came from that side. Watford seemed to be a little bit stronger on that side as well. So listen, sometimes this 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 does happen, but I thought he was okay. I, look, I'm I'm going to give Kieran Tierney a, a six today. Mm. I thought he improved in the second half, uh, but I'm going to give him a six. So yeah, fair uh, enough. Ben White, so Ben White, what's your thoughts on him? <laughs> um, for me, Benjamin continues to grow in stature in in this team and i tell you something kev i believe that benjamin is not only now making a case to arsenal fans in a sense that you know that a lot of fans haven't been able to see his quality and what he brings to the table i think despite the fact that yes this is a weak watford team but remember we'll take the wins where we can you guys we still had to perform well and we still had to win the game so we're not going to be negative about who we played you saw how Manchester United did against Watford, right? Exactly. Yeah. So um, if he's not chosen over Harry Maguire to, to go to the World Cup squad, now we don't know what's going to happen between now and the end of the year, Kev, but, but if he he's is, fit, if, if he's fit, I mean, I, I think when you look at all the other English defenders, he's one of the best out there right now in the Premier League. Um, English defenders, don't, don't go crazy, kids. So, yeah, um, for me, he gets a, a seven. Okay, seven. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Ben White a 6.5. So, I thought he was on the ball. I think, I, think, I think he's good. 
there were just certain moments, there were times where I didn't feel easy. You know, like we normally do where you could, you could rely on that back five. And sometimes we were saying we might have to lean on them. I, I just weren't convinced at some certain moments of that, of that, that game. And when Sissoko got in, I thought Ben White would just stand up. He didn't. That was his worst to... moment. Yeah, but you know, we're free one up. You just, just stand your ground. You don't need to actually try and block or you just stand your ground there, and he, he's got to beat you. And the fact that he went past the ball and Sissoko got round him and put it in, you know, although he was trying to help, help out, it was still a, it was still a weak moment. But. His all-round play, his passing, his link play is, has been excellent, Sophie. So I'll give him a 6.5. Um, yeah. Shall we move on to Gabriel? Gabriel sure. Um, What's your thoughts? Centre-half partner who, again, I thought Gabriel was okay. But I, I wasn't convinced. Remember, we, we conceded one in the first few seconds of the game. And we were like, it was offside, but we're like, well... They've put us on a little bit of notice there. I thought, I thought again, I thought the defence was quite solid, Sophie, as opposed to being outstanding. So, do you know what? I'm going to give Gabriel a 6.5 as well. I thought him and Ben White were pretty solid. Um, nothing spectacular, but I'm going to give him a 6.5. Yeah, uh, I see what you mean. I don't think... I think there were a few mistakes in everyone today, barring two or three players, right? It wasn't, what I love though, is that maybe at times it wasn't great, but we were solid. We found a way to overcome the adversity, right? And I, that's what I like about this particular performance against a Roy Hodgson team that was really gritty. I mean, after they got that spectacular first goal, credit, um, to them because they came at us they played unafraid and i think that that shook us a little bit so you know for me gabriel if i'm going to give benjamin the seven gabriel gets a seven two kev okay that's fair you know we're consistent with that let's move on to the midfield now so i think we're going to start to get a little bit more flamboyant thomas party in the midfield on the base it's all about the base, about the base, about the base. <laughs> um, one day he's going to score, and when he does, Kev has said uh, many times, 420 of you in live chat, by the way, kiss the like button if you cannot wait for Thomas Party to score a goal Big for time. the Arsenal. Um, Kev, I think that since AFCON, since his sending off, he's really stepped up and shown a lot more leadership on the pitch. Um, uh, I think that his subtle passing is so special. And I think since I called him out, he's played really well. So thank he's, me, everybody. He watches. He's watching yourself. He's <laughs> watching you, definitely. <laughs> he, has, he has steps up. You're right. Um, oh, you want my mark, right? Yeah, please. Um, he, get, he, he, gets, um, he gets an eight for me, uh, Thomas Party. Uh as much as I would love for him to stop shooting, I feel like if he doesn't shoot, then he'll never get that goal. So other than making those poor decisions when he should pass, I think he's been really, really good. Foopy John, calm down, son. What is up with you? I, I Holy thought, cow. I, I thought Thomas Pike was a bit unlucky in the first half. You know, where he's cut inside and he hit the left foot shot, which just went past the top corner, just went past the post in the, his first shot. Look, I, I that just, first touch on that shot, though, was lovely, Kev. Oh, it's beautiful. Just the execution. There was yeah. a defender there as well. He's just trying to get it round him. Sophie, again, I, I, I study this guy because I look at some of his intricate passing and his incisive passing. And he, he's, he's unbelievable. I, I, I think people just think it's easy in the trenches in there to just get it and just sh shift it around so easy. It's, it's not easy at all, but he makes it look easy. Um, I agree with you so far. I give Thomas Party an eight. I thought a lot of our good play and a lot of our front foot football came from him. He was the catalyst to get it going. A lot of the time he's getting it. And his link up with Martin Odegaard is excellent. Martin Odegaard just sits in those little pockets and Thomas Party just zips nice, crisp passes into him. Uh, I think it's... Um, 
he's a special talent, Sof, and we do need him to be consistent, 100%. But I think slowly but surely, he's getting there. Yeah, also, um, Little Soph brought up a good comment too. You remember when Xhaka got kind of pushed to the ground and then there was a there were three Watford players around him and you got the sense that, oh, God, don't get involved, Xhaka, don't get involved. Yeah. And Partey just parried him away. Held him from, away, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, not, yeah. that was good to see. Very good, good to good, see. Good leadership. But yeah, yeah. I give him an eight, Soph. And um, yeah, we're, so we're starting to get to the, to, the, to the main boys now because I thought... Um, Party was excellent. How about Granit Xhaka, Solf? Granit Xhaka playing a little bit further forward at times, which was good. Yeah, I mean, again, I think that he's improved since his card. I think that he and Thomas Partey have become so important to this particular Arsenal team at this particular time. Their partnership is as important as Gabriel and White. We've said that a lot on our show, Kev, yeah. that seeing these partnerships form, you can see the Udegaard Saka partnership, you know, it's coming to fruition. Um, I think the most um, ele escalated in terms of partnership has been the White Gabriel because they played more together. Mm -hmm. But this one now, um, you know, we're seeing less of this and more of this um, with regards to these two. And kind of the harmony um, that they're playing with. I give uh, Xhaka a, a seven, you know, kept it together uh, and did his job today. Mm -hmm. So far, I give him a seven as well, to be honest with you. I thought, without being outstanding, I thought when we needed to get a grip of the game, we did. When we needed to shift the ball around, we did. And when we needed to put a foot in, we did. So, again... Sometimes just doing your job can get us over the line and let the glory boys further forward with the real explosive talent do the job. And I thought, you know, Xhaka and the party partnership was excellent. I thought Xhaka gives us that nice balance in midfield. And whether we like him or not, he's doing a good job at the moment. So, so I give him a seven. Exactly. Definitely, just like you. Let's get on to uh, Gabriel Martinelli. So. Before Udegaard? You yeah, before, Ude I'm going to do Udegaard. Um, right beside Lacazette. Okay. So, I love this picture. And I think that before the goal, he wasn't having the best game. And I think it's fair to say that, and I'm not ragging on Martinelli. I just think sometimes, Kev, he wants to be the hero a lot. You know, you can sense he try he overly tries. He tries too hard sometimes, and he doesn't really need to do that, right? Um, but the goal, my goodness, that touch, the technical ability today on our goals was just absolutely sensational. The touches, the passing, the finishing, it was absolute world-class. And that, that was a world-class goal. And we'll get to Lacazette eventually, but I thought that saved his performance. And for that, for me, Martinelli gets, um, just for the goal alone, he gets an eight. But his overall performance, I would say, be fair to say, a seven. Mm. So far, I think that's really fair. I thought there were times where I thought Martinelli struggled a little bit to get into it. He was doing quite well defensively, but... Attacking wise, well, not really himself, but that goal. I mean, talk about moves. You know, the move, the move in itself was was outstanding, but that finish was was world class. So, I, I'll give it. I'm going to give Martinelli seven and a half because for me, that finish. When you're not having a great game, and then all of a sudden that opportunity comes up, ends up being up the winning goal, Sophie. Such a great finish, and you could see him, he felt it. So, mm -hmm. I give him an I give him an extra one point for that because he was going to get a six and a half. He gets an extra point on my on my score for that. So he gets seven and a half. So I thought he was uh, I thought he was okay, but the goal helped him. So brilliant. Yeah. Let's let's get on to Boy Wonder, Bakayo Saka. <sighs> Where do I begin? Oh my God, Kev. Where do we look? The, I saw this picture the other day. It's a different one to the one I've been putting up because the one in the top right hand corner, I'm not sure we've shown before. Um, but man of the match, incredible performance, coming of age kind of performance, even though we've seen and felt 
coming of age performances from him so many times, you know, um, this was probably for me, one of his best performances I've seen, um, since he's been playing for the Arsenal. I, I did this tweet, all hail the hail end. Um, just brilliant. I mean, he gets a nine. He was, his touch was amazing. He scored a beautiful goal. Um, he, his interactive play with uh, Udegaard, the way they connected, the communication. Remember we talked about how when Ozil was at his pomp, a lot of the times players just weren't thinking the, same, the way he was. Yeah. Well, I think that Saka, it's clicked with him and, and Udegaard right now. And it was just beautiful to watch. A nine for me, Kev. 600 in live chat. Kiss that like button if you love Give us minimum Bukayo. 300. Come on. Come on, squad, he's for minimum 300. Look, I, I thought the way Watford were trying to press us, you know, we struggle sometimes when teams sit back, Sophie. And we discussed it on, on Kev Says on Friday, where Watford can't sit back because they're at home. They're going to have to come for us a little bit more. They've got the home fans. And it, it, it helps our wide players so much more because they're 1v1 all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw a great break by Saka for Odegaard's goal. Really good move into play. Paul gets cut back. Odegaard sticks it in the far corner. But Saka's goal, I mean, the way he shifts it and puts it into Lacazette. Lacazette's touch and roll back. Yes. You know, the way he just shifts it and puts it in the top corner. It's, 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 he is proving to be a, such a special, special player. We've mm -hmm. said so. If he can add goals... Yep. To some of his performances, that's what we need now. He's what he's on nine goals this season. Yep, he's on nine goals this season, and he was causing Watford all sorts of problems. They were trying to double up, but he was getting it and shifting it quick. I thought he was special. I think it was a nine performance as well. And um, even if we could give him a point two five, I think we'll give him a point two five. So. Just because he's a, he's one of our own, and he? he's nine point two five. I'm going to give Mateo <laughs> just because he had a little bit of sp sprinkle some of that pepper on it. He was a, he was excellent today. He yeah, really, excellent. really really brilliant. Now, guys, if you want to come into the show and have your say with Magic Mike, go to www.gunaopenmike.com. GunaOpenMike.com. We'll put the link in the comment section too. And you'll come backstage and then Mike will put you on one by one and you can have your say. There's 600 plus of you in live chat. Um, if you want to come on and have a chat, then please do so. Uh, and um, you will be able to bounce into the show and um, yeah, and have your say. So let's line them up. Let's line them up, folks. Kev? Martin Erdegaard Odin. Well, Martin Udegaard, for me, uh, <laughs> I said that when you asked the question, I said that he's our most important player. I think there's a few that we've found it difficult to choose from, mm -hmm. Kev, which, um, you know, has been, has, has been a, a luxury we haven't enjoyed over the last few seasons. He is sublime. His touch is sublime. That first goal, another player who we've said we wanted to score more goals. We wanted to get back to the December Arsenal. Yes. And that is coming to fruition again right now. For me, he gets a nine as well. I thought he and Saka today bossed it, ran it, um, and did everything they should have done um, to make that partnership just evolve to even greater heights. Because, Kev... I know the opposition is weaker, but you have to make them look even weaker than they are in these moments. And again, we picked up three points against a team we had to because the games that are coming down the pipeline, that's the last team that the Arsenal play in the relegation zone for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? You give them a nine, don't you? Yes. Sophie, I thought he was, I thought he was brilliant. Uh, honestly, I thought he was brilliant. Some of his touches in and around the box, in midfield, where, you know, they tried all sorts to try and stop him. Tom Cleverley going in front of him to stop balls into him. Him then marking, uh, Tom Cleverley marking him. But none of it worked. And if you, if you see Martinelli's goal, Saka plays a ball into him and 
the flick he does with the outside of his foot, so to go around the defender into Lacazette. Lacazette sets it up and Martinelli finish it was was outstanding. I gave I gave Saka 9.25 for a reason, so because I could give her the guard nine. <laughs> that's why that, that, that had to be one a little bit more, but I thought Martin Erdegaard was was outstanding, Sophie. He's a brilliant player and I'm hoping some of the gooners now start to appreciate this this young man because mm-hmm. he's a he is a special footballer and the stronger we get the better he's going to get. Watch this space. Yeah, I agree. He's very special and right now he's looking like an absolute bargain in terms of what we we invested for him. Just look at some of the the deals that have gone for not only foreign players, English players, uh, he's, he's an absolute bargain. I mean, oof, he's fun to watch, Kev. He's a delicious, delightful player to watch. He is. He's, he's, he's special, really is. Right, let's get to Captain Lacazette, who I didn't think started pretty well, Sophie. But boy, did he have an impact on that game. <laughs> well. Um, this guy... This guy, yeah. all right. His touch today, Kev, and his play. Uh, awareness. And awareness. Oh and, I mean, his touch, everything uh, about what he did today. The only thing he didn't do was, you know, he didn't score. But he didn't have to because the contribution he made for the goals was absolutely sensational. And I, I hope people can appreciate kind of what he brings to the team and, I just thought he was fantastic today without having to be the game the game saver, you know? Uh, for me, a Lacazette gets, uh, I mean, an 8.5. I thought he was brilliant. And his technical touches, again, like the technicality in our game today was just really a joy to watch. High level, wasn't Very it? Very high level, it really yeah. Was, it, it was high level. I, I thought Lacazette, like I said, he didn't start the game great, but I thought he came into it and he had a... A huge impact, obviously, with the second goal. His move, his touch and his rollback for Saka just totally wrong foots the whole defence. Saka could come onto the ball, take a touch and then dispatch it in the top corner, which was great. And then, obviously, that touch for Martinelli just to set him. You know, sometimes it looks easy, but to set him that he doesn't even have to change his stride. So he could just come onto it and hit it up what was excellent. Yeah, Mikel Arteta did get an assist as well on the side, throwing it. <laughs> that into, was great, wasn't it? Yeah, throwing it into Cedric, I think it was. But here's the other thing, so you know, there I think it was Dennis got caught in the first half on his heel just outside the box, and the referee gave the free kick. Lacazette got caught inside the box where he twisted the defender. The defender, I think, it was Kafkart, caught him right on his mm-hmm. heel. We didn't get a penalty. Didn't even look at it. Yeah. So. You know, there was, there was maybe opportunities where we could have got a penalty and he, he could have scored. Um, he had a couple of wayward finishes, but I look at the positivity he brought to this team. So he was he was excellent. I he was. And, and uh, listen, when you when you get two assists in 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 a three two win, you've done your part. So I agree with yourself. I give him eight point five myself. Yeah, I mean, really he, and he didn't want to come off at the end. You could tell he wanted to try and grab that goal to just put the icing on the cake too. Um, but it wasn't meant to be. But my goodness, I know that that whole team will appreciate what he did today. And you as an ex-player, Kev, we were, we were texting and it was like, wow. I mean, he was he was just, you need that, right? You need You need that from him for the time he's here. Right. There's a few of you backstage already waiting to come into the show. Magic Mike will be taking over in just a few minutes. So hang in there, be patient um, and be sure to uh, to come into the show. It's uh, Mike, put the uh, put the link up again so everyone can see it. GunaOpenMike.com. You'll have some fun and have your say um, right here on the Highbury squad uh, with Mr. Magic Mike. Super Kev. Yes. We've got Nicola Pepe, obviously, Eddie Nketiah and Rob Holding. Should we do them together? Yeah, I think we could do them together because... I don't think any of them really had an outstanding day, but they came on, they had a job to do, didn't they? Yes. They all had a job to do. They had to work hard, they had to show a bit, and they had to track, which they done. So 
Eddie almost scored. Hit the post. Oh, you know, step <laughs> over, hit the post. <laughs> Listen, uh, that would have been that would have been great for his confidence, obviously, um, and obviously take the game away from them. But maybe Eddie saving his goal for another day. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, just maybe. So I was, uh, I was like, wow. At first, I thought because the, there was still some commentary going about Pepe, and then I was like, wow, that was. I mean, he's. It was one of his first touches. Credit to him. He's come on and he's bald. He's really trying to get involved in the game, he's even though you come in cold. Yeah, he's looked really, really hungry. Yeah, so hungry. For, for me, I'll give them all a six because, you know, they came on, they did their bits. And, you know, um, once again, unfortunately, not any of their mistakes in terms of that second goal from Watford going in. I didn't, you know, um, that was unfortunate to kind of let in another goal. But yeah, 5.56 for me for the subs. What did you say? 5.56? No, you, you said sixes all across the board. I've right, given point... sixes as well. I've given <laughs> sixes. So, hey, what you, so what's all this 5.656? What's all that? I'm giving them a six from you, Sophie. <laughs> let's, <sighs> let's get on to... I, I, want, I want me and you to give the fans a, 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 a mark as well before we do our Arteta. Let's do the fans. Because I yeah. can hear them constantly. They were brilliant. I they, they, Kev, they're so good, the away fans this season. And the connectivity with the fans and the team, it's just on another level this yeah. season. You know, it's a really special bond that's building with this group of players. Again, you know, these are players that we can care about, fall in love with. You posted a picture today of you and I think it was Rocky and Dixon. Uh, or was Pops. it uh, Pops? Yeah, yeah four and, of us, yeah. And we're getting back to that kind of love affair, you know, with our, with our team. And it's very easy to just really, you know, love these guys. And so I saw, there was a picture of Potsy and Gianni Judges and Harry. Yeah, um, good in, picture. It, yeah, it was a really good picture. So, yeah, fans get a 10 out of 10 for me, Kev. I, I agree. So 10 out of 10. They were vocal. They were loud. They were, they were smart. They... they they had to moan and complain when it was ri when it was time. Yeah, they, they they shouted for every uh, challenge, etc. Every opportunity put the referee under pressure as an away fan. So I, I I think they were they were excellent. And we're going to the last Arteta. What's your mark for Mikel Arteta? So I love this. Four uh, I, win, so I think I've credited the artist in the description for this. Four fourth, out of four. Fourth win out of four. I'm going to give him a. I'm going to give him an eight nine today, eight point five. Eight point five. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he managed the game brilliantly. Um, I think we need to be very careful about the leaking goals and not staying engaged right to the very end of the game. I think that we thought the game was pretty much won. You know what I mean? And you know, uh, Ramsdale needs to have a little bit of a check. Can't but off. Yeah, can't. yeah, can't switch off. So that's again, there's always something to improve, like you say, Kev, on the pitch. Always. Always, yeah. But he's got this team clicking for him and for each other, and they have they are clicking together, um, you know, for him. And something is really working right now. And we're, we we've won the games that we had to win, and Leicester is the next one as well. Mm -hmm. But that that was a great performance today, and again. He timed the, the substitutions really well, I thought, too, Kev. Yeah. So if you give him eight and a half, I gave him a nine today. I thought the pressure was really on us against a team who nobody's going to give him an opportunity, are they? Nobody cares. No, no. Everybody thinks, oh, you're just going to steamroll at them. It doesn't always work out that way. We've seen this team go to Old Trafford and get a nil-nil and maybe could have nicked it. You know, so I'm not saying that they are, you know, top of the league or anything, but for us... The pressure's on us to win. We've got to want it more than them. And we've done it, so We've done it, made substitutions correctly. You know, we see it through. And um, the Arsenal nation are happy. We've got another three points in the bin. We're fourth in the league. And City are one up. And hopefully we stay there. <laughs> that, that would be so important for us, Sophie. We stay fourth. And then go on to next week when, until we play Leicester and hopefully do the business there. 
Yeah, for sure. Kev, it's so important. Um, you know, you had some of the squaddies were ridiculing you. Win, 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 win. And they were like, come on, Kev, we're not going to win. And you've got it bang on so far. Super Kev, bang on. The, the Leicester will be, uh, the Leicester game will, will just, you know, be a trifecta, not a trifecta, or a quad. Anyway, one of those, you know, where you get it all right. It's a quin, quintuplet or whatever you call it. It's the fifth. It's the fifth, isn't it? You know, it's the, this, it, again, they roll on. 13 get cup finals now after 14 to 13 now. Got to do Leicester. It's important. Got to see, see them. Got to see them off. Yeah. And it's at, and it's at the Emirates, which is, which is what we, we want. We've had four cup finals, which we've done brilliantly in and got three points in every single one of those. 13 cup finals left. There's going to be some of the toughest cup finals we've ever played yes. uh, this season and in a long time. And it's going to be really fascinating to see how this Arsenal team does against Manchester United, against Liverpool, against Chelsea, against West Ham. Man, if we can take a few points off them too, we've got these games in hand. And let's hope City batter United today uh, because that would just be delicious and delightful, wouldn't it, everybody? Yes. I think so. Magic. Hit that bell, Magic. <laughs> Fourth place, How baby. How are you, Magic? You all right? I am doing well. Hello, squaddies. Hello, Sophie. Hello, Super. Hi, guys. Hi. All right. I'm so glad that this was a win today. I mean, I to do this for the first time, kind of the first time uh, on, on Highbury Squad after a loss would have been uh, a little distasteful for me. Yeah. But... Uh, it's a win. It's three points. Beautiful, and I and, and I couldn't agree more with 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 your player ratings. Except they were too short. Not enough decimal places. Yeah, no. Well, Kev added a few, and he had a point two, a nine point two five. Nine, I, I had to add a nine point two five. I was shocked about that. There had to be magic. A man of the match, and Erdegaard and Saka were there, and then Saka just had to get it for me today. He could have been Erdegaard. I had I had Saka at a nine point eight seven nine one two seven. You know, all right. Seven, well, seven. Wow. Well, you're just a you this Matty guy. This guy loves maths, right? Stay in the show, everyone. Um, you would see the link if you want to have your say. We've got quite a few squaddies in the back right now, Kev. So not the like button, <laughs> not it, not 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 it, and then on. get on and tell treat it like the bell. Come on. Get on it and tell this magic mic what your feelings are about the Arsenal today. <laughs> Definitely. So we're handing over to Magic Mike. He's going to be around with you for another good good half hour at least. Um, and we're ducking out. Thanks for taking over, Mr. Magic Mike. Uh, well much. done, squaddies. We love you. Kevin and I will be back live tomorrow night for another round of Monday Madness where we'll get yep. stuck into more fantastic dialogue with you. In the meantime, I'll play this. And we'll see you tomorrow night, but stay here for Magic Mike's Magic Open Mic Half Hour. Make it Aye. Half Hour, Mike. Don't go on and on. Hey, <laughs> Squaddy Daddy. <laughs>
who has been waiting patiently backstage. And uh, Abby, great to yes! see you. How you doing? Yes, elbows. Where are you calling from? Uh, uh, Lincoln, England. Beautiful. That's up north, yeah. correct? Yeah, up north and east, near Skegness. Okay. That's what everyone knows. <laughs> so how is it being a gooner in, in Lincoln? Are, you, are there a lot of you or are, are you the, the gooner in Lincoln? Uh, no, actually, I uh, seem to surround myself with Guna fans, I do, because they are the best fans. A little bit miserable sometimes, but they, we are the best fans. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, I, you know, look, if you want to be miserable today, there are a couple things you could choose from, uh, but really, it doesn't seem like a day for that. So where would you like Hello. to start? Um, just, I think, with how, like, smooth I, I know there was a hiccup towards the end, but I really loved how we moved the ball and everyone's position today on the pitch. Um, you know, I, I, yeah, I just thought it was like, it was quite magical. I couldn't figure out if it was um, how we were playing or how Watford was, was playing, which allowed us to be like that. Um, but yeah, it was really enjoyable. I actually gave up um, a painting job I did to watch it, and I'm really glad. I was thinking, oh my god, oh nil nil with Man United. It was like, oh, it's gonna be so dull. It's gonna be a one nil. I could have it on the on in the background. So glad I watched it in the end. That Look, was so entertaining. You can paint any time, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Yes. You, you can't watch Arsenal grab fourth place by the horns, do what they're supposed to do, finish the job that they're supposed to finish, which is something that we exactly we struggle with in the past. You talk about the which is what I should play. have done, by the way. But... Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. you talk about the fluid play. You know, I don't want to bring, I, I don't want to cast aspersions against anybody. But my son and I were talking during the game about how, you know, there's one thing, maybe two, but one real interesting thing about when we really started to play free flowing football when Saka and Emil Smith Rowe started really getting end product in, and it was the exclusion of Aubameyang, in our opinion. Um, you know, Aubameyang can, can bang in the goals. He's, he's clearly got talent, but I think it's become clear why maybe it didn't fit into Arteta's system. And, and, uh, you know, ever since that was not an automatic team sheet selection for him, the whole mm. game has opened up, especially for some of our younger players, wouldn't you say? Yeah, definitely. I think um, it's more about the team as opposed to one person. I'm not saying that um, it was just about Aubameyang, but I think he was really well liked and well loved um, among the players and among the club um, that they almost kind of wanted to like feed, they wanted to feed him they wanted to give him the chance we saw that a couple of times today didn't we where I think uh, a couple of chances fell to Lacazette where actually they probably could have taken it themselves and scored and we could have left there you know 5-1 um, as opposed to uh, yeah what it was um, so yeah I think taking him out there's there is a lot more cohesion within the team. So, yeah, I wish him the best of luck. You know, really like the guy, but, but you know, it's about the club and not yeah. about one player. Doesn't always have to be, you know, oh, look, he's scoring goals now and, you know, why couldn't we get along with him? So, uh, a lot of people to choose from for this, but we want to hear your man in the match. Uh, who did you think today just just nipped it? Well, it's it's argue, it, it's hard to argue against Saka. I thought both Saka and Udegaard were just, uh, for not and Parte actually, I thought he was really great. He was really subtly brilliant in what he did. I think I counted twice where I was like, Whoa, "Don't do that, like that." But he rescued himself. Um, Both times was he so, was he cocking back his leg to get ready to shoot? <laughs> was that? <laughs> oh, that that first shot. I was. I mean, I thought it was in. I, I like the fact they were a little bit lower in this game. Than, yeah, he's, cal uh, he's you know. calibrating by by 2026. He'll have it right on target. Yeah. Uh, this is it. We're, we're going to see it, you know. Well, actually, so, we'll probably see another header, actually, won't we? We won't ever see him score with his feet. So, so, yeah. so, so yeah. soccer for Saka. you, too? I think that's... Yeah, uh, I, thought that's, was, that's... I thought he was phenomenal. Uh, phenomenal. I, I just hope that we can invest enough in the team to push us. Hopefully, we get Champions League this season. But for next season, we invest in the right areas um, and the supporting cast um, to show him that we are going to be ambitious because he deserves, him and ESR and Martin, all of them really deserve to get some uh, trophies in that cabinet. Absolutely. I think they're on their way. Uh, I, mm. I, I, I just think that it's coming. And Abby, thank you so much for uh, for kicking off the Open Mic Show. Enjoy uh, the rest of your weekend in Lincoln. Thank you. And, uh, and hopefully we'll see you again soon.
Cool. Cheers. Thanks, Mike. Bye. Take care. All right. So that's how the Gooner Open Mic show works. Uh, go to GoonerOpenMic.com. That's uh, Open Mic with a C. Um, and join the queue. There are some spots open for you if you if you want to join. Just remember, you have to have your camera on. There are a few of you backstage that don't have your camera on uh, as of yet. Um, so we're going to go next to Quabena. Uh, Quabena is joining us from where are you joining us from today, buddy? Oh, hi. hi. Good day, Mike. Hi. How, How you doing, you, my Mike? friend? All right. You a happy awesome. man? I have this game on. I know you don't have it. Yeah. yeah, if you can turn the sound off the other game. Uh, we don't want to get any kind of copyright thing. And So where are you mm -hmm. calling from today? Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad, fantastic. Yeah. So you're a little closer yeah. to me than than uh, than Abby was. I'm I'm here in, uh, just outside Washington, D.C. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. In the States, as I'm sure you could tell. So yes. let's start from the end with with this call. Who's your man of the match for today? Are you are you Osaka? Or are you going with, uh, with Laka? Who, who else? Who the God? Odegaard. All right. Fantastic yeah. shout. So tell me what, what you think he did today that, uh, that, that makes him so valuable. Um, his presence in the game, the way that everything we do flows through him, where he's the engine room of the team per se, um, the offensive rhythm of the team, the heartbeat more or less. So everything that really great that happened was him. That sense of composure and um, calmness that he gives the rest of players to play in these tight spaces that that we're so getting better at now you see him at the forefront of everything all the little combinations him with Saka, him with party even with Xhaka at times and then pepe when he came into as well yeah you know i i watch most arsenal games with my son jake who's 18 uh Quick plug: He's just been named the starting right wing for uh, for his varsity high school soccer team. All I right, call it congrats. soccer. This is the one time I call it soccer because <laughs> it, you know it, it's being played here in America, um, and uh, he knows the game uh, better than I do. I, I'm I'm a tactical idiot, but I like mm. what I see, and I just can't explain it. He's been harping on Odegaard all season about how he is the the heart and soul of this team. Saka's great. Emil Smith Rowe's great. You know all, but but that Odegaard was. He also plays more FIFA than anyone I think I know. So from right. from that complete perspective, his love for Odegaard can't be ignored. And mm -hmm. today he had the kind of game that you've just described. It, it I mean, just priceless. And and to think the fee that we paid for that guy. Mm -hmm. you know, we're not supposed to talk about fees because, you know, we don't talk about the fee for Pepe. We shouldn't talk about the fee for Luck at, for, for Odegaard. But, my God. Uh, it was about it. Yeah. It, I mean, it, 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 it's incredible. So, um what do you think of? Uh, let's talk about the uh, the captain's armband for a second. Uh, went from we were all worried, you know, wondering whether it go to Jaco, would it go to uh, KT when when Lacazette came out. It went to KT, so I think we can put to bed, You're right? You know, Captain Gate. Except KT's got the band twice, and we've conceded two goals, scored none, and two goal leads have turned into one goal squeaky bum time. So I'm calling mm. Tierney Gate. Uh, we have an issue here. He should be banned from being captain. Do you, would you agree? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I have no issue with him having it. I just think, at least today, because um, it felt like if he had a bit of an off game, but normally, at least for the past few weeks, to me, he's been solid defensively, completely. But And that seems to be the thing. is you know There are people who are saying that it seems like he's not playing as well simply because his responsibilities have changed um, and he's playing more defensively. I mean, I, I, I didn't see that he had a particularly bad game and I'm it's, obviously joking about the coincidence between his armband and the goals, but, yeah. um, but uh, we've got Quabana from Trinidad and Tobago. If you want to be part of the open mic show where there are a couple spots open, go to GoonerOpenMic.com and, uh, and, and join the fun. Uh, anything else you want to say? Do you think we're Do you think we're going to relinquish this top four spot at any point, or do you think this is ours now to keep? Mm -hmm. I think it's ours to keep because if you if if fans at least take care and notice how we've been performing week by week, we've gotten better. So there are certain things that I wanted from us to be doing in the earlys, like um, let's say take for instance the Everton game where we would relinquish possession or, or relinquish control of the game. We'd score really early, but the players weren't able to mentally 
and physically control the game. That aspect of their game was missing in it. Took a few tries and everything as the season went on for them to start getting it. Whereas when we went into the Brentford game and the Wolves game, you actually saw like the players, like something clicked. They really started to grasp how to go about controlling it. And it's not just about giving away possession, which where even in this game, what I really enjoyed offensively from us was that even when we got to the right wing and Saka either got the 2v1s or Cedric went to the right wing, he wouldn't just cross automatic. It was, okay, recycle. Let's see what other options we have. And those little nuances the players weren't doing early on in the game, but week by week, especially when we get more training sessions, we do get better at it. But I think just the rhythm itself was off with the transitions today just because of the length of time we had off. So as the games become more frequent, you won't see those gaps transitionally. Yeah, well, but you know, I it, it's almost it. crazy that this game ended up so close on the scoreboard because it certainly didn't mm-hmm. feel that way. I mean, there were moments where Watford certainly so quality and they're not really a ninth, 19th place team, especially not now. I think it, it's really down to their poor run earlier this season. So, you know, right. I'm I'm going to stick with the the my motto that any win is a good win and and it's three points in the bag and we've got four straight away wins, mm-hmm. 13 goals scored, uh and after today three allowed. I mean the the form is is increasing. Now we got to put it together against one of our direct rivals in the top four. Uh, yeah. But I'm feeling pretty good. So, uh, so Quabena, yeah. thanks for joining us. I appreciate thanks it. Thanks again, Mike, for having me. Shall Enjoy the rest of the weekend. And and... Thanks again, yeah. too, as well. Take care. Absolutely. And uh, take care, man. Join us again. All right. All right. Next is, joining us is going to be Mohammed. Uh, Mohammed, we've had on uh, open mic pods uh, on our channel before. Welcome back, Mohammed. Calling from Palestine. I remember this time. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Hi. It's a long time now since I uh, the last time talking with you. It's my pleasure yes. always. It's uh, it's it's a good it's a good day, and and we're I think we're talking after a win this time, which is which is something new uh, for us. So uh, start with your man of the match, and then and then drive the conversation to whatever you'd like to talk about. Yes, I think without any shadow of a doubt, it's Bukayo Saka. I think uh, everything in the attacking uh, shape of, of our team uh, today went through him. Odegaard also was fantastic, but for me, Saka had his uh, stamp, his signature on uh, on the goals, on every fluid attacking, uh, dangerous uh, attacking for Arsenal. So I think Saka was brilliant one one of the of his best matches this season i think man of the match is saka uh, you know mike i'm happy i was nervous all all of us were, were nervous in this in this match uh, on the paper on paper watford match is the easiest match during all the schedule and until the end of the league you are facing an ordinary team uh, second bottom we got the three points, but for me, it's in, in a not convincing way. Um, if we were a bit more clinical and ruthless, this match will will will, will end 4-1 or 5-1 maybe. So we had to, to fight in the end for the 3-2. Some good uh, signs, some bad signs for me as, as a journalist to analyze the match. Okay, the form of Odegaard, the form of Saka, fantastic. The goal... For Martinelli is very very important for him to boost his confidence because, because Martinelli in the last few weeks, Mike, has a dip in form. So yep. Not Martinelli that uh, that we knew. So this goal will make his confidence uh, grow much better. So this goal for Martinelli uh, is very important. Uh, the worrying scenes. The worrying scenes is that um, we conceded two goals. Stoppy goals. I think Ben White is the responsible for both goals because the cross went and uh, Hernandez is his man. He stood looking at the ball, not at his man, and he has a double kick and uh, in the Back net. Of a goal, though. I mean, you got you got to. I mean, you got to give some some credit. And I, you okay. are you are I not give, giving credit. I'm, I'm speaking about. That. I'm speaking from a defensive uh, point right. of view. I am a defender. 
I should have my man, not not uh, him for free to uh, play uh, the ball like uh, a bicycle kick. Second goal, second goal, really uh, return Watford to the match. So we shoot ourselves in the foot. First of all, Chaka, sloppy, sloppy, sloppy ball cross the field to them to build an attack. Then Ben White, just stand, stand in the in front and in the way of Sissoko. Don't buy yourself. He bought himself. So uh, Sissoko easily scored the goal. So I think this is worrying. Um, our midfield, we faced a very ordinary team. I think, okay, party has good match, ordinary match. Okay, we have done the job, but uh, return to the first half, some sloppy, many sloppy passes from party. Uh, the sloppy pass from uh, Chaka. So, uh, Lacazette. Okay, I love Lacazette. He works very hard, but he must start scoring goals. He had chances. Very, very good chances. Sometimes, sometimes I imagine this Arsenal team with a world-class striker. What this will do for, for our attacking uh, numbers, for our goals that we score. So, yeah. some good moments, some bad moments of the game. Overall, we got the three points. It's okay. But, but uh, seeing the ahead uh, schedule. We have thir 13 crucial, crucial matches uh, fighting for the top four. Five of them, remember Mike, five of them are against Liverpool, the toughest match at home, Chelsea away. These are the toughest two matches. The three crucial matches for me must win matches against West Ham away, Spurs away, United at home. Now, Mike, Mike, for me, the three matches that we must win, United, Sp Spurs, West Ham, direct rivals, yeah. direct opponent for the fourth spot. Liverpool match is the toughest match. Also, Chelsea is uh, away is a tough match. So, with this performance today, it's not enough. Well, we need, we need to rest level. We need to be more clinical and ruthless and defensively more aware. And we need, inshallah, soon, Tomiyasu and Smith Rowe to be back in the side. Because I think both of them are very important. So, three points, very important, very precious three points. Now, uh, City is playing United. We are waiting for City win. Two. Uh, gain grab of the fourth place. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's a uh, it's a part it's a part of the learning curve that we are still in. We have to remember we're not the finished product yet. We have a very young team, goal scorers averaging 21 years of age today, and we haven't really been suffering in, in you know defensively and leaking goals that much in the last few weeks. So, you know, we look at a result like today and say, you know, we we didn't pay for the mistakes we made, and hopefully we have a coach and a team that is gaining the experience of winning that will fix those problems. And, um, and so it remains to be seen. I think it's important to take the negatives out of the game. It's more important for Arteta to take the negatives out of the game and work through yes. those. And I actually have confidence that he will. So Mohammed, it's good to see you again, mate. Uh, appreciate you. We're going to bring Elliot on next and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon after another win. Thank you, Mike. Uh, soon, soon, inshallah, I'll be with you and with many victories ahead. Beautiful. Always, All right. Take care, always, my friend. Always a pleasure being with you. Beautiful. Thanks. I enjoy your company Thank as you. well. Take care. And that's a bit of the Gooner fan base. I mean, I don't need to say it, but we've got, oh, uh, City have scored to take the lead. Uh, I don't need to say it, but people from all over the world with different backgrounds um, and, and, you know, who normally wouldn't have anything to do or, or be aware of each other. And, uh, and we have the one thing in common that matters the most, and that's our love for Arsenal. And, uh, and, and I appreciate Mohammed coming on and, and sharing his thoughts. So, Elliot, we're going to go to you. Elliot, great to see you. Hello, 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 Mike. How are you? Good, good. I was staring at an empty camera for a while, but, but know, now we've got the face reveal. I was trying to get my camera together there. But where I, where I, are you calling from today? Calling from Toronto. 
Toronto. All right. So we've got Canada, we've got Palestine, we've got uh, Lincoln, uh, we, we've got Trinidad and Tobago. I mean, this is a truly international flair today. So, uh, so let's start with your man of the match today. Well, without doubt, it's Saka. Saka is going to be a superstar for this club, and he's just he's just growing by leaps and bounds. This kid is twenty, turning twenty-one years old. He's, he's listen, this his it's, his it's class. Ridiculous. Is, it's it's ridiculous. It's there for all to see. And he's one of the best young players in the world, and we are very lucky to have him. We're very lucky to have two great players in terms of Saka and Emma Smith Rowe here at the side. And add, add into Martinelli and add into uh, you know a few other sides that hopefully, fingers crossed, we grab in uh, in the summer transfer window. But he was excellent. My man of the match definitely was Saka. It, it's, I mean, my son and I have this conversation all the time. I'm like, who's the third best young player in the world? I mean, the first two, I think, are pretty obvious. Yeah. Mbappe, Holland. Um but, you know, who's the third best? I ask him because he knows more about, I mean, again, from, from FIFA, he yeah. knows more about the players and, and how they play. And then he watches them, in, in, you know, in real football. So it's not right. just from FIFA. But And and he said, because I, I want to see if he thinks it's Saka. And it's always between Saka and Foden in his mind. So where, how would you, I mean, how would you make the comparison? He said Saka on form and potential, Foden on current quality. You know, we don't have to keep making comparisons, but I mean, that's a pretty good no. one, I think. I mean, we see the com the competition in the England squad. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the, the England squad is uh, made better for it for for them being there. I mean, Foden, you know, he, he's he's great in close control. He's he, you know, I think he's a better finisher than Saka right now. But in terms of actual caring of play, actual you know, uh, impetus on the game, I think Saka edges it a bit. I think Foden, for the most part, he has you know, a, a group of, of stars around him to, to, you know, help him grow where Saka has to carry the team for us at the moment, because, you know, we don't have, we don't have that sort of talent around him, but to be fair and Frank, I mean, they're, they're two excellent players. I mean, you, you, you can go with either one on, on any day, but. Uh, and, no, and no one's talking about Grealish anymore, the hundred million pound player, well, but, but yeah, I mean, you, 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 you really can't tell how good he is in the team that he's in. I mean, you can tell he's got quality Foden, but, but. Yes. But from a uh, from a standpoint of picking up the team and putting them on his back, we've yeah. seen Saka do that time in and time out again. And the guy's barely old enough to drink in our country. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. You know, it, it, it's and, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't take advantage of that. But but yeah, I mean, it's 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 such a joy. And and he's not the only one. He's not like we saw ten years ago where we would have one guy carrying the team and then the, and then he would agitate for a move and we'd sell him. The person, absolutely, Fabregas. You know, even Nasri to an extent. I mean, we just—he's part of 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 something better, and then it's all kind of held together by that number nine. Uh, you know, I think Muhammad was the one who was talking about the end product for Lacazette. I mean, his end product is being viewed is, is being realized in the form of Martinelli, Smith Rowe, Odegaard, and Saka, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's going to come with time. Uh, you know, by, by the time he hits 24, 25 years old, so, I mean, we'll, we'll laugh at these moments and say, oh, remember when Saka, you know, couldn't, uh, wasn't, wouldn't be able to finish. I mean, this guy's, you know, potentially a 15, 20 goal scorer in, 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 in the future. And, and assists as well. I and mean, assists as well. His one, he's got, two. He's got the complete package, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it looks like players are just lining up to do, you know, one, twos with him because they know it's just going to be fun. It's going to be an easy goal. I mean, the, it just... Such a beauty to watch today. And yeah. uh, and I like how the team kind of, I mean, 18 seconds into the game, the ball was in the back of our net. Uh, I just about freaked out when that happened, but. Yeah, um, exactly. I mean, we got we to gotta clean. Uh, we, I mean, we, I mean, we, we got to have better stars. We got to have a more focus in there. I mean, that second goal was was totally needless, totally, you know, on, on our backs. I mean, why, you know, just focus in on the ball. Uh, take care of business, you know. Uh, put it into Rose Ed and 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 let's be let's be having this. You know what I mean? I mean, three points were on the table. We were coasting, and all of a sudden, we we throw these hiccups in the way. We throw these, you know, these wrenches in the wheel, and it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. They're you know they're they're you know they're 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 at fault errors, and we need to clean that out of our game. But again, we're a young side. We're getting better. You know, within the next two three years, those those sort of errors will be cleared up. But again, to be in this position that we're in right now, fourth place. We can see that you know United are losing at the moment to Man City. It is it's, it's a breath of fresh air to be in. It's it's a, it's a definite uh, uh, great place to be in, especially with Hell Week coming up. You know, with with Leicester, with Liverpool, and Aston Villa 
all three in a row. And, you know, we got to be ready. We got to be prepared for that. Uh, you know, I, I mean, listen, we uh, this this is what's going to tell tale on our season. I think if we can get through the uh, if we can get through hell week uh, within, you know, with with, you know, at least two wins, I think fourth place is ours, to be fair and frank. Yeah, I mean, we're we're putting the push forward for it, and and you know, I I have been saying from a logistical standpoint, from a financial standpoint, with regards to our payroll, everything I've been saying with this process and this reconfiguration of Arsenal's staff and 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 strategy that we're one year ahead of schedule right now. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, it may not feel like it because the last five years, you know, of, of post Arsene Wenger and towards the end of Arsene Wenger, but I I will hold to that that we are one year ahead of where i think the team thought we were going to be yeah. and it just makes the ability to to add quality as, as arteta said this week in his press conference over the summer that much better and if as long as they add pieces that that fit with the chemistry that we have and don't destabilize it sky's the limit next year i mean i am Absolutely. feeling without the without the sales that fed the great signings i'm feeling a lot like Liverpool four years ago at this moment. I, they, I, I totally agree. They weren't totally perfect. Agree. They didn't win every game. They didn't go straight from eighth place to first, but they did it over the course of a couple seasons. And, you know, it remains to be seen whether Arteta and Klopp can be compared. At this mm. moment, I wouldn't make that comparison. No, definitely not. But we certainly might be by this time next year. Who knows? Exactly. So, uh, Elliot. Mike, yeah. Let me, let me say this. Your analysis, your, 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 your accounting excellence on that show you did with Highbury Scott, where you just broke things down, was amazing. I shared that with so many of my art supporters. I said, you got to see this video. The way you broke things down was amazing. And, and kudos to you hey, uh, for Appreciate doing it. it. And, 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 and you did an excellent, excellent job. And I, and I agree. If we bring in this, the, the right young players like Darren Nunez, I'm, I'm, like a guy like Darren Nunez, a guy like, uh, like uh, Tielemans, uh, you know, players uh, players like uh, Jonathan David who I am touting I literally being from Canada let me say yeah, this I was going to say I mean there, there's there's no home field uh, bias there but I but I it's far from just he's amazing. that rate that guy He's amazing he's amazing people please please believe me when I say this John, don't don't dump on Jonathan David this guy is going to be a superstar and if we don't take him now we will regret it I I'm, I'm literally saying we will regret it this guy is on his way. He's a he's a fox in the box. He's technically astute. He's all over the pitch. Listen, Mike, you know from the states, and you, you remember that game we had with you just the other day. He was amazing on the day. He was flying all over the pitch, and the Americans couldn't handle him. Let me say that again. Internationally, this guy is beyond compare, and he's already playing in the Champions League, guys. And listen, I think he's an Arsenal forward, quite simply. And we need to get onto his case, but bringing in young players like that will only make us better, and we will and and only solidify our top four placement. Yeah, after, after, ever since missing out on Eden Hazard, there's been a pretty open portal and wormhole from Lille to uh, to Arsenal. So yes, um, so we need to keep that thing going. And uh, yeah, uh, the 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 chat certainly agrees with you. Terrence Tibbs uh, agrees. De Barry Byrne uh, likes David. Uh, he's very well suited to us. So yeah, hundred uh, percent. Thank you for your nice comments about the show. It, it really helps me that Swiss Ramble doesn't like to do podcasts because trust <laughs> me, we, we've tried to get him on ours because I wanted to kind of go head to head with him in a friendly way and, and, yeah. and pick his brain and, and vice versa. So, uh, you know, I, I made the rounds last week and it's, you know, it's just a different way. It, it gives you perspective on maybe kind of tempering what you see in a positive or negative way. It isn't more important than the you know, than than what you see on the pitch, but to me it matters because it tells you what the team is trying to do and what their limitations are. Like it, it was plain to see why we could only loan players in January a couple seasons ago, right. but yet no one would, you know, everyone didn't care about the rationale. They were just like, how can we be so poor? So understanding the numbers is important. Dispelling a lot of the myths is important, and so I was glad that Sophie and Kev. Gave me the opportunity to do that. And thank you for your nice comments, Elliot. Yeah, you did fantastic work there, mate. And, and long may it continue. And, you know, it's, it's it's great for the Arsenal uh, for the Arsenal supporters to get that sort of perspective where you can break things down and, re and, and see where the process is going and see what, the, what, what Arteta et al. are trying to do here. Uh, I'm not a supporter of Arteta my, myself, but I see what he's doing. What they're trying to do and what they are getting out of. Because I, yeah. I don't think a lot of people understand how deep 
I mean, again, on the pitch, you see it, but how deep the situation was off the pitch. Yeah. This was a massive chasm that we have been climbing out of. And that's why I say I think we're, we're a year ahead of schedule. Indeed. But, uh, Indeed. but Elliot, great to see you. I hope to see you again on a future thanks, open mic show. And uh, thanks for joining us from Toronto. Cheers, mate. Thanks very much. And uh, up the gunners. All right. Up the gunners as well. All right. There is uh, a little bit more time. We've got uh, a couple spots left in the, uh, in the, in the chat. If you want to join us, go to GoonerOpenMic.com uh, and, and uh, get in there. We're going to go right now to a very recognizable name in Squatty Land. I know him as Kevin. You know him as Demsec. It's Kevin. Hi, Good Mike. to see you, my friend. Good to see you too. No, I know we, I know we've uh, you've done a face reveal on the squad before, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of, yeah, but not a full face reveal. I mean, um, so what you have full face, face reveal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the one where I roasted Kevin Campbell on his you, uh, end of season predictions. That's right. You, you and, and, a weird uh, video. <laughs> and, and and he began this season with with a prediction of like thirteen straight wins. I think what he meant to say was that the the fixtures the second time around we'd have thirteen straight wins because we're yeah we're getting probably done. yeah yeah you got to give him you got to give him a plus for his positivity, haven't you? You got to oh, aim I, for that to get everything. It. That's everything about him, man. Is you is, know is positive in every way, which uh, but but not fakely positive. I mean, it, it's legit, and and you know what? It's infectious. Yeah. Now I've had I a chance to. I have an I've had a chance to come down from the end of the game, and I and I'm, I've had a think, and I've decided to give Michael Arteta the second man of the match for him mm. picking up the ball, throwing at Cedric so quick, and telling him play quickly, <laughs> yeah, which led know, to the third goal. It's those little things now. If Hector Bellerin was our coach, would it have been a foul throw to Cedric? Uh, or... <laughs> Probably, yeah. Speaking of Cedric, third straight game, maybe, maybe fourth. Yeah, uh, you know, and and certainly more than that. If you if you would remove the one game that Tomiyasu kind of played and then re-injured Came off. himself, but um, what do you think of his game today? I mean, I the, just statistically well, got... speaking, <laughs> he had the most tackles of anybody. Yeah, I've got a worrying thought around that. While I think Cedric's been playing great, Ben, Benjamin, has actually been getting slightly worse. And I think that's down to the defensive work that Tommy Asu does and how Tommy Asu helps ben, Benjamin out. Cedric quite often is up the pitch and he's not as defensively minded as Tommy Asu. So for me in the game, Benjamin was at fault probably for both goals. You know, yeah, the, yeah, you're not the first the, to say that. I mean, it, it's you know, uh, he didn't, you know, Cedric's behind the, fir the first goal scorer, but Benjamin doesn't block or get tight enough to that first goal scorer. And I wonder if Tommy Asu was there, whether the outcome would be different because I think they link. People talk about the how important the Gabriel and Benjamin partnership is, but they miss how important the Tommy Asu and Benjamin partnership is. You know, yeah, they I have mean, a more it, of an important partnership than ben, Gabriel and Dean does. Seems to do his own thing, but Gabriel copes. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's so good. It really is a back four. I mean, you you yeah. uh, the back two certainly seems to be the anchor of the back four. But we, you know, we have seen how different things can be when you go from Tierney to, mm. to Nuno, as well as Nuno's played this season, and from yeah. from Tomiyasu to to Cedric, especially. Mm. Um, you know, Cedric offensively has been a revelation recently, but defensively, you know, it, it, I, I think you're, yeah. you're right about that. He's putting that in his game. You can see him putting that in his game, but he's just defensively more aware. So and when we, when we get to those, what I call the critical games, which Mo said, the games where we're playing teams potentially for top four, and I'm actually going to exclude Tottenham there because I don't think they're going to challenge at all. Um, I think their season's crap already. Well, you know, um, you know well, because they get better. They get battered wherever they go. They get battered. They get <laughs> battered. Um, it's important that we have Tommy Asu in over Cedric. Yeah, it's a little. Yeah, we're losing a bit up the front, but we're going too much, so much at the back. These calf injuries. Uh, I mean, the, I just remember when Rosicki was hurt, like a year or two into his career, yeah. and, and it was this niggling calf injury, and then all of a sudden it was a year. It just worries me. I mean, Tommy, I, mm. I, you know, I, I don't know. 
well, how serious this is. The club's really been kind of tight-lipped about it. What physios say, and I picked this up on the Ben Foster podcast, uh, Foscast, is that a muscle injury is actually one of the worst injuries you can have because the injury, the blood and the swelling, actually has nowhere to go. It's all contained within the muscle. And it takes a lot longer for that injury to... <laughs> to um, That's hot, man. To recover. Well, I am a southerner. I don't live in the south, but I am a southerner. Yeah, well, um, I live in the Midlands. Right, um, so Mas Gunner was asking if you're an Essex boy, so you're... Uh... Well, I was actually born in Essex, but yeah. Um, That's where you go. The accent. Didn't grow up there, but I was born there. Um, I've lost track now where I was going completely. You yeah, were talking about, about blood and guts. Injury, and muscle injuries. Muscle injuries are the worst injuries. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, you know, I think it was it Kevin that said on the main show, or maybe even yourself, Mike, because I was flipping between the Man City game and that. And they, they were 2 1 up last I looked. Okay. Um, I know, terrible, isn't it? Um, how important it's been getting rid of Aubameyang to get this team going. You know, in, and, 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 and I'm sure you share with me, it, it, we don't mean that with any malice. No, all. I don't. No. And, and we're, and, and it isn't, you know, I, I, I get angry with people angry, but I mean, it, it bothers me when people try to essentially assume things would be this, like, like when they talk about Saliba's play or specifically when Doozy's play or Aubameyang's play players who have left yeah. us and how they're doing with their new team, and their new league against different competition. First of all, gone out of sight, out of mind. Second of all, yep. completely, you know, the time space continuum as, as we learned about in back to the future is, is what it is. If you disrupt that somehow, Nothing is the same. So if, if you just plug in one person to what we have going on here, there, there's not just physical ability. There's continuity, chemistry, build up. The you know, if if Obama Yang's starting in the middle, we don't see Lacazette doing what he did today, which was essentially, yeah. you know, it was almost like the Giroud role of of yeah. being facilitator and allowing everyone around him to score. Yeah. You just, yeah. it, it's a completely different game. And it doesn't mean he's a bad player. It means he doesn't fit the system that we want to play. No I'm about to get, I'm about to get shot at by the squaddies. This team missed Giroud as an option B. I love Giroud. Because we have players that can whip the ball in from out wide that Giroud might need seven attempts to score one, but he'd score one. Yeah. See, I, I, I've, I've, always, I've, always, I've always craved and missed him a lot. I mean, I, would I yeah. would I have kept him instead of having the first two years of Obama Yang because essentially no. It was not <laughs> no. But but his profile as a player and his yeah. I mean just he's a more handsome. Well, no, he's not even more handsome than Lacazette. They're both really really hot. But uh, no, I mean, he just says he's more handsome than you, and I was just going to decline. Well, who isn't? But uh, <laughs> I, I think that's. I think we're on screen. A pretty good place to end. Um, yeah. But uh, first of all, I do. I do again. Just want to thank you for your continued support of Gunners versus Cancer, which is going to segue segue me into a quick announcement for those of you who have stayed. I appreciate you guys staying. Uh, 162 of you in live chat. Hit it, nut it, like it, do it. Uh, but also nut and caress GoonersVCancer.com, please, because uh, we are giving away. If you haven't seen it already, it is. Uh, something absolutely amazing. It's a shirt signed uh, by, and we had Alan Smith on our podcast on the Gooners pod on Tuesday last week, where he told the story of how this came to be. But I asked him to put together what I thought would be the most incredible piece of Arsenal memorabilia. And wouldn't you know, he got it done for us. Um, so here to so take a quick look and, uh, and then I'll invite you on to do the final salute when we come back, if you'll stick around. Uh, so please go to Gooners V Cancer and check this out.
All right. So you're in with a chance to win that, aren't you? I think I am, yeah. All right. Well, there's I'm five sure I am. There's five hundred entries that are being uh sold to enter. Just go to GunnersVcancer.com. It's twenty five dollars mm -hmm. to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. It's about just under eight nineteen quid, I believe, and uh, and it gets you one out of five hundred. You can buy more if you want. You're certainly welcome to try to game the game the raffle if you're if you're donating. But uh, as soon as we hit 500, we're just under halfway there. We're gonna give the, away that amazing one of a kind shirt. So uh, I, I have got a key question to ask you, Mike. Yes, is Jax entered? Uh, I don't believe. I, I I don't believe. That. Um, you know, well, I can't help. I can't force him not to. But if he, if he has one entry, we might as well just draw it right then. <laughs> just but, uh, pack it up and post it to him. Yeah, exactly. I'll just, I, in fact, I've already sent it to him, and he hasn't even donated yet. Because I'm anticipating <laughs> in the time it takes to get over, uh, that'll be done. So that'll do it for the first Gooner Open Mic post game add on show. Hope to be able to do a, another one again soon. Kevin, Mo, uh, Elliot, let's see, uh, Abby, who am I forgetting? Um, if you came on, I appreciate it. It was great to talk to you. Uh, there was uh, Trinidad and Tobago in the house uh, today and and, uh, and and just really, really enjoyed talking to everybody. So thank you, Arsenal. Three points. Thank you, Squatties, in the top four. And Kevin, at ease. At Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. Uh, Kevin knew to put his hand back up.